Welcome into the show, everybody. My name is Mark Farzad. This is the Farzad Show presented by MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Uh, joined by a lot of got paid yesterday for the Philadelphia Eagles. And Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid, get this, we're on the court at the same time. It was only two games that Tyrese Maxey missed with hip tightness. It felt like an eternity. I don't, and the Sixers didn't do terrible. They didn't do terrible in those games. But the Sixers needed Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid back on the court. First time since January. Both of them were on the court together playing basketball. And it was a thing of beauty. You see Maxey on the court for the first time in two games last night. And he goes out there and from get-go showed you uh, no rust, no tightness, nothing like that when it came to the hip. The first play, literally the first play for the 76ers, Tyrese Maxey puts the ball on the floor, top of the key, drives the lane, gets the two, and then he ends up scoring eight of the Sixers' first 10 points. Sixers end up going on a 17-4 to run to open up the game. Joel Embiid's knocking down a three. Maxey's knocking down a th threes. Plural. Kelly Oubre gets a little uh, slam dunk thrown in there as well. And the Sixers were off and running. And it looked like everything was going to be just fine and dandy. And then, unfortunately, the, the Heat are also pretty good at basketball. And the basketball is a game of runs crowd. Had a great night last night. Had a wonderful night last night because basketball is absolutely uh, a game of runs. So we'll jump into that game, of course. We'll get into the Phillies taking on the Nationals tonight. The debacle that is the New York Mets, even though they finally won yesterday. We'll get into what happened with them. Some histor A historical number for the not so amazing Mets. We'll get to that as the show goes on today. Uh, but I want to start it off with Jordan Mailata because uh, we've talked a lot about what's going on with the Eagles this offseason and how insane this Eagles offseason has been from the joy of signing a Saquon Barkley, at least that's what I experienced, the joy of signing Saquon Barkley, uh, to the disappointment of Hassan Reddick no longer being a Philadelphia Eagle, but also getting reunited with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, a guy who I know and the, the, just the, the talent and the attitude. It, people love him here in Philadelphia. He told us that we were effers, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? Eh, we still love him. We still love him because we know he's pretty good at football. So he's back in the Eagles secondary. And now Jordan Mailata gets re-upped for the Philadelphia Eagles. Last signed a three-year deal in 2021. I thought it was a lot more recent than that. When I saw that they gave him an extension, I was like, already? But he signed an extension that's going to keep him in Philadelphia through the 2028 season. First thing, when I saw he get re-upped for three years, $66 million. 48 of that guaranteed, by the way. Um, when I saw that, I first thought of the Eagles after they won the Super Bowl, only had something like five picks, I think it was. And one of them was Jordan Mailata. And I remember thinking, and they, they show the rugby film. Oh, the Eagles are taking a chance on this Australian rugby player. And they show a svelte Jordan Mailata running the rugby around the pitch or whatever. And he's running around. I'm like, damn, I hope this guy gets a football in his hands at some point. He never has. Much to our disappointment. But you know what he has done? He has gone from never having played football before to being one of the best left tackles and now one of the highest paid tackles in all the NFL. Trent Williams, Laramie Tunsil, um, amongst the highest paid tackles in all the NFL. That's what he's gone from. And shortly after that crossed my mind, I can remember his first year in the NFL being in the locker room and him just being a guy that was so eager to learn the game of football and so excited to be in this NFL locker room. And I, every chance I got, I was able to talk to him and, and get to know him a little bit and kind of, kind of find out what kind of person he was and insanely driven. And I have this distinct memory of Barrett Brooks. I coaching him up would be a little much. It'd be a little too much saying, right? But it would be reaching, but encouraging, certainly. And I remember this this conversation they were having. I was a part of it, but I wasn't offering anything about playing tackle in the NFL, okay? Um, I had been talking to Jordan 
Um, Barrett walked by and said, Hey man, you got it. You, you got this, you know, you, you got it down. You matter of time before you're getting the reps out there on the field and all that. And it was a really encouraging conversation between the two of them about playing left tackle. And now we are talking about a guy who has signed two big contracts here with the Eagles, including the $66 million, 22 average annual salary deal with the Eagles over three years. And I couldn't be, I, I, try, I try to never forget that these are people. And I am I could not be happier for Jordan Mylata. Also couldn't be happier for Jeff Stoutland because this guy is just cranking out talent on the defense, on the excuse me, on the offensive line. And yeah, I mean, some people they don't want to give Howie Roseman credit for any drafting, but uh Landon Dickerson looks pretty good on the offensive line. Uh Lane Johnson looks pretty good on the offensive line and has for a long, long time. Uh Cam Jurgens looked pretty good last year uh at the right guard position. And Jordan Mailata is now, once again, still your future left tackle. Your left tackle. Your franchise left tackle, if you can even say that. It, it's been amazing. I couldn't be happy to see that. But I remember seeing that footage on draft day, and I remember one of my takes on the day was like, wow, the Eagles had five picks, and they took like two football players. I'm trying to think of who else. Obviously, Avante Maddox, and he got re-upped yesterday on a one-year deal. Nice to see Avante back. I think everyone, like Avante Maddox is a good corner. He has to stay healthy. I like Avante Maddox. I just need him to stay healthy. The deal he was on, not the deal that he was going to end up uh, playing on. That's why they released him, and then they brought him back on the restructured deal. Very happy to see that. I know that uh, after he and uh, Dallas Goddard were no longer roommates, they both bought houses in a very similar area. But you bought a house in the area, you want to stay in that house for a while. Vontae Max is here for at least one more year in Philadelphia, and he's happy to be back. The Eagles announced that yesterday, and shortly thereafter, Jordan Mailata got re-upped on his three-year deal. Uh, I, look, this is going to be a big year for Jordan Mailata in terms of uh, a next step. And, yeah, it all comes down to the idea of Jason Kelsey no longer being here. Does it put a little bit more on Landon Dickerson being that he's right next to, let's say, Cam Jurgens for the upcoming season? Certainly. But you're looking at a guy that has been here for a long time, since the year after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And it's him and it's Landon Dickerson now that all, excuse me, him and uh, Lane Johnson that have all of a sudden become your longest tendered uh, offensive lineman. Jordan Mailata has this attitude of everything's going to be all right all the time. He's always smiling and all that. But the man has faced adversity. Going back to getting to know him in the locker room, I want to say it was 2019 that he was really starting to hit a little bit of a stride and understand technique and understand what he had to do on the offensive line. And let's not forget, you still had uh, Halapula Vati Vitae on that offensive line. You still had Jason Peters on that offensive line. And he is trying to you know, beat out guys like that for a position on the offensive line. And Vitae, people forget, came in and played for that Super Bowl run after Jason Peters went down. And I want to say it was the, the Washington game that year. And I'll never forget being in the stands when um, when Jason Peters went down uh, against the Washington. Uh, I think it was, the, no, it was still a football team, I think, at that time. And everyone has held the breath. Oh, the left tackles down. Vitae, what's this guy going to do, you know? And he came in and he played great. Played great. And then next man up was Jordan Mailata a couple years down the line. But you knew, at least he knew he was on that trajectory. But that the year following the Super Bowl, I remember seeing him in the locker room and the Eagles had made the call to shut him down. He had come up with, I think it was a knee injury at the time, and they just thought it best, like, all right, we're going we're gonna to resume all activities next year because we just don't want to push you uh, through this because it could affect what we see for you down the line. And here we are now, down the line. And you're talking about one of the highest paid tackles in the NFL and one of the best tackles in the NFL. The money matches the talent in this case. E extremely excited to see this for Jordan Mailata. Extremely happy for the band as well. Uh, as far as what it means for the Eagles, like I said, leadership is going to be have to be a big thing for him. He leads in a very optimistic and positive way. Uh, I found it very interesting when Nick Sirianni was addressing the media last week at the owners' meetings, he talked about how Jordan Mailata leads in a very, uh, what was the word he used? I believe, a unique way. And in this upcoming season, he wants to see Jordan Mailata take on that type of role with the team. It just can't be Lane Johnson on the offensive line, you know, being the, the guy to rally the troops or anything like that. It can't just be the quarterback. 
if you have a voice on this team and people listen to it, you need to speak up. Sometimes you got to be a guy like uh, Jalen Hurts that really picks his spots few and far between, often defers, yeah, to A.J. Brown. But if you're a guy that, like it or not, your voice and your opinion carries weight in the locker room, you better speak up. And Jordan Mailata, according to Nick Sirianni, seems to be one of those guys. So I really look forward to seeing what you're going to get from Jordan Mailata this season. I think I already know what I'm going to get from him in the football field. It's a matter of the influence on the locker room because this team is looking for guys to take over that role. Speaking of leaders in that locker room, anybody catch Brandon Graham on ESPN yesterday? Uh, if you if you watch me on uh, with Bill Calarulo doing a hit uh, with him, if you watch me with Birds three sixty five doing a hit there, right? I think I even mentioned it on this show once or twice. I, I, I built a um, a floating shelf. A hobby of mine is woodworking. Okay, and I was building this floating shelf. So uh, of course, if you have a project of any kind, especially one that um, involves your home. And you know, I'm trying to hide the wires, you know what I mean, to the TV because the floating shelf's going under the TV with the sound bar and the other things, you know. Um, there's no. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just. I'm just gonna build a floating shelf. How hard? How hard can that be? You know, 45 of the angles. You know, oh, I told you. About, I told you guys about using the the table saw and all that. So I'm working on this project yesterday. Got the TV on, and all of a sudden I hear Brandon Graham, and I don't even remember that it, the ESPN is on in the background. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been in the same situation, and I just hear BG, and I'm like, oh, BG, what's he up to? And then I hear ESPN voices, and I'm like, what's? And I turn, and I'm like, oh, 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 my man in the turtleneck in the suit, looking great, answering questions about the NFC East, and they're asking about Saquon Barkley, and they're asking about Andy Reid, they're asking about uh, Doug Peterson, Nick Sirianni, and Vic Fangio, and all. This. And I'm like, oh, he's, oh, it's a little audition. This is an audition. This isn't a guest spot. This is an audition to see if that wonderful Brandon Graham personality can translate uh, into the analyst role for the, the 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 mothership, if you will, of the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN. Um, I thought he was good. I thought it was real good. You can tell he was a little nervous. You can tell he was a little nervous. It's 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 weird. I'm not saying that I know this from my own experience because uh, I'm not a former football player. Shocker. Uh, but I have heard from those guys that all of a sudden find themselves on the national stage in an analyst role, in an audition role. They're like, this is a little nerve-wracking. Uh, but I thought he was great. I, I really did. Uh, I thought he did, did a fine job, got his feet wet at the national spot, referred to it being his last year in the league, uh, which we all know, the farewell tour, right? When it came to offering any really let you look under the hood of the Philadelphia Eagles, there wasn't a lot there, as you would expect. He's not going to give the company secrets, the trade secrets, while he's still with the company. Um, but listening to him yesterday, talk about Vic Fangio, it was all positive. One thing he said was, he was asked about you know Fangio's coaching style. And he said he's excited about it. He's heard a lot about it. And he's going to help drive home the message as a leader on the team. Okay. 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 He's seen the reports. <laughs> he's talked to other guys in the league. He knows that Vic Fangio is that old school style. And if he's got to help bring home the message of the old school style, well, then he's going to do it. I mean, think about Brandon Graham's career here for a second, all right? Very similar to Jason Kelsey. Very similar to Fletch Fletcher Cox in that you played for Andy Reid. Yeah, I got drafted by Andy Reid. That's one version of a head coach. And then you had Chip Kelly. <laughs> and then you went, especially the, off, excuse me, yeah, the defensive side of things, the way they had to contort to all of a sudden be a 3-4 defense and all that jazz. Good Lord. Uh, and then Doug Peterson. All right, getting back a little bit to the Andy Reid. All right, getting back a little bit, a little bit to the Andy Reid. And then all of a sudden he's gone, and then Nick Sirianni's in here, and you got a couple of different defensive coordinators, and your only real mainstay is Jeff Statlin. <clears throat> For the offensive side of the football, that is. Defensively, everything changes. Every, everything changes. So if you're Brandon Graham, you've been through it. Now Vic Fangio is going to come in here with supposedly complete autonomy of how this locker room is going to be run from a defensive perspective. Brandon Graham is going to be one of the leaders on that defense, making sure everybody's falling in line. I hope that's the case. Uh, not to 
again, skew negative, but trying to think of every angle surrounding the Eagles, this thought popped into my head yesterday while I was what, listening to Brandon Graham. And this is a weird thing. And this is not me talking. Again, this is from what I've been told by athletes. It's a really weird thing. If Brandon Graham really is on that victory tour, I would certainly hope that it wouldn't matter that his snap count might go down from 41% to 30% or something like that. But it's a weird thing with athletes where if you're not playing, especially if you're, maybe you're not playing a lot, how, how far is your voice going to go? Now, you might say that's crazy. And my first reaction to something like that is that's crazy. And this is a question that I've had because I remember a game that the Eagles had in Minnesota and Brian Dawkins wasn't playing. Like Brian Dawkins was still active. He was still an NFL player, okay? It wasn't like he had retired and he had some guest pass to be on the sidelines or something like that. No, he was just injured for a game. I think it was the year he had the stinger in his neck. And he wasn't playing in this particular game in Minnesota. And he was, the Eagles defense looked putrid in this particular game. And Brian Dawkins was there on the sideline and he was laying into people, laying into people. And I want to go into who, but a starter on the Eagles defense told me after the game, it's like, dude, like we all love Doc, but, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This sounds like a really big butt. And they go, man, what, if you're not playing, you shouldn't be talking. And I'm like, this is Brian Dawkins. This is a, a Hall of Fame uh, safety. This is Brian Dawkins, one of the most beloved Eagles ever. And you're telling me that, oh, if he's not playing, don't talk. He's not, so he hasn't retired. I think he still played four more years, five more years after this incident. Maybe two with the Eagles and then two more with the Broncos. Really? It's an amazing thing. If you're not playing, don't talk. Now, Brandon Graham's at least going to be playing. But if he's going to be overshadowed by Josh Sweat, if he's going to be overshadowed by Bryce Huff, if in some fantasy, Nolan Smith is ready to party, then who's going to be listening to Brandon Graham? You would think with 15 years in the NFL, it would be a oh common. Oh, you definitely listen to him. But I just hope that his voice carries enough weight in that locker room. And after Fletcher Cox, what do you got? Darius Slay? All right. Maybe Darius Slay speaks up a little bit. Devin White, is he going to be a leader on this team? Didn't work out so well there with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson? In that secondary, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a very interesting transition year for this defense. Uh, also, you know, leadership, sure, but uh, what we have known for years, especially with Fletcher Cox being in there, with him being able to, I don't know, um, inspire young talent like Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. Hopefully, they're ready to take that next step. The question marks continue defensively with this team. But bottom line, I thought Brandon Graham did a fine job yesterday. And I, I think just the fact that he plays, it'll be enough to carry weight in that locker room. And they better show some damn respect. Better. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, if you were like me, you couldn't wait for 7.30 last night. Couldn't wait for 7.30 last night. 76ers. We're facing uh, one of two teams that should give them a bit of the, a run for their money as the season winds down. One of them is the Miami Heat. They took care of business against the Heat last night, 109-105. Uh, they got the Orlando Magic coming up a little bit later. Uh, other than that, should be a cakewalk. The sixth playoff seed should not, should not be something that the Sixers are looking at as an impossibility. It is very possible. And last night, even though it felt like an eternity, the Sixers got Tyrese Maxey back after two games. Tyrese Maxey, as I told you earlier, got the Sixers started off on a phenomenal foot, and they wanted a nice run to start that game. Now, how does this sound to you? Because to me, this is blah, chef's kiss. This is a beautiful thing, okay? Maxey starts the game out with that drive, lightning quick to the rim, 2 nothing Sixers. Maxey gets back-to-back -back threes. Next thing you know, the Sixers are up eight points with a sprinkle of uh, Kelly Oubre slam dunk thrown in the middle of there. Embiid then hits a pull-up from the elbow. Embiid comes down the court on the next possession. He hits a pull-up from the elbow again. 
It's 14 to two in favor of the Sixers. Joel Embiid hits a three with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. It is now 17 to two in favor of the Sixers. Kyle Lowry hits a three to squash a little bit of a run there by the Heat. It's 22 to nine in favor of the Sixers. Jimmy Butler hits a three to give a little bit more life there to the Heat. But all in all, the Sixers, for the most part, were in control in that first quarter, including that 17 to four run to, to make things happen in the early goings of the game. For the, excuse me, 17 to two run in the early goings of the game for the Sixers. You love to see it. Stop it right there. Joel Embiid played the first six minutes of the first quarter, went out, came back for the final two. In the second quarter, Joel Embiid played the first six minutes of the quarter, came out, came back for the final two. This wasn't what Nick Nurse was doing ahead of time. And look, I, it it probably, most likely, is because of the injury. And, uh, you know, they, they need to make adjustments because they want to, you know, uh, ease him back into things without anything bad happening. And, he, yes, he's got to play himself back into shape. And he played four more minutes than he did in his previous game against Oklahoma City. He played 33 minutes last night. He played 29 minutes in the previous night. Okay, so he's playing a little bit more. You're ramping up his workload. I get it. I like it. I respect it. But before, Joel Embiid was playing all the first quarter and like six minutes of the second quarter, and then you know, all the third, and then he basically sit for the first four minutes of the fourth. I actually like this deployment. I actually like this usage of Joel Embiid by Nick Nurse. And I know it's heavily influenced by coming back from the injury. I get it. But if this is going to be a new rotation for Nick Nurse with Joel Embiid, I kind of like it. I don't hate it. That's all I'm saying. Do I want him to play more minutes? <laughs> I want him to play more minutes. But I'm just saying the, 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 the first six minutes of the game and then Comes out because he finishes the quarter. I like that. I like that better than just there. Right, you're playing the whole fourth. You're holding the play. You're playing the whole first quarter. Uh, actually, I like this a little bit more. Second quarter hits last night for the Sixers, and it was not good. <laughs> Second quarter hits, and all of a sudden they lost complete control. High Smith went on a run there for the Heat. Martin uh, ended up getting the Sixers back into it a little bit there, uh, but it was a 17 to four counter run, if you will in that third quarter by the Miami Heat. And then something magical happened. And I didn't realize how magical it was going to be until well after the fact. Nick Nurse calls a timeout. Nick Nurse calls a timeout. And with about six minutes left, the Sixers start their own run. Maxie came up with a big driving layup there to get things going back in favor of the Sixers. They go on their own run. Campaign comes up there. He hits a three. Maxie's able to get a floater. Next thing you know, the Sixers go on an 11-1 to run. Embiid then adds to it by getting an N1 situation and converts it for a three-point play. You blink, and it's 60-47 to in favor of the Sixers. Maxie hits a three off a turnover created by, I think it was Nicholas Batum, corralled by Kyle Lowry. He gets the kick out there to uh, Tyrese Maxie from three. He nails it. It's a 20 to 1 run in favor of the Sixers in that second quarter. Oh, they responded, baby. They responded. Go to halftime, feeling pretty damn good about yourself. Come out in the third quarter and another run. This one in favor of the Miami Heat. It's a game of runs. Don't know if you heard that before. That wasn't even the worst part. Seeing the Heat go on another in insane run, and they ended it on an 8-0 run, and that's how they opened the fourth quarter as well. But the run the the Heat went on and dominating the quarter by nine points that wasn't that wasn't the scariest thing. I am not one, even in recent times here with Joel Embiid coming back from this injury. I am not one for a long time with Joel Embiid that every time he hits the floor, I go, "Oh my God, is he okay? Oh my God!" I, I'm not one for that. But when I see someone land on his knee like they did yesterday in the third quarter, that's that's where I start to panic. And what happened last night was in the third quarter, uh, Joel Embiid goes out there and uh, he's going for a loose ball, lands on the ground. And the one camera angle they had, Joel Embiid looked like he got his right knee landed on by, I forget who it was with the heat. Allah Abdonabi, uh, Allah Abdonabi goes, oh, at least it wasn't his left knee. Then they show the other camera angle, and it was totally his left knee. He got his left knee landed on, and I'm like, oh, God. He got up, he played, and he played rather well. 
Fourth quarter. Going through this game last night, Maxi and Payne started off in the fourth quarter. Back-to-back possessions. They get threes. They make it a 95-93 game with the Sixers trailing. Sixers had three turnovers to open up that fourth quarter uh, that were convert- converted into, I think it was eight points. Uh, three turnovers in three minutes. Not great. Then Maxi started to take over. Martin came up with a big layup as well. Um, he also got a no foul call in, uh, late in that game that, that really pissed me off because I know KJ Martin isn't exactly going to get all the calls. If Tyrese Maxey has trouble getting calls, KJ Martin's going to have trouble getting calls. But it was a foul. Kevin Love went right up into him. He went straight up, but straight up into KJ Martin. So anyway, they ended up making up for it by a nice little layup there. But anyway, um, Oubre hit a three. Made it a 105, excuse me, made it a 103, 102 Sixers lead. So he put the Sixers in front. Ubre also in the third quarter had a great driving dunk uh down the baseline, which was fantastic. But then Ubre, or excuse me, Maxi comes up there, pull up baseline jumper, made it a 105, 102 game with 230 left. Ubre had the steal and the lay-in on Jimmy Butler. I had a pan speaking of panic moments. At the time, it was a five-point game. Ubre has the steal and the layup on Jimmy Butler with a minute 33 left in the game. He Again, camera angles are everything. I thought he was taunting Jimmy Butler. And I started yelling at my TV. It was one of the situations where, like, uh, the missus was uh, in the kitchen, and she heard me yell, and she was doing the dishes, and she heard me yell. And she's like, what? And I was like, no, Kelly Uber is an idiot. And she's like, what? And I go, I think he's taunting somebody. And then they showed the other camera angle, and he just flexed. And he wasn't even looking at Jimmy Butler. I was like, oh, phew. So he gets a steal in the land. It's a five-point game. Rogier had gone ice cold. Kevin Love had gone cold. Jimmy Butler missed a three at that point in the game as well. And those big shots that the Heat usually make to close out games, they weren't making in this one. And it wasn't because of some amazing defense by the Sixers. They just weren't making them. But Terry Rogier finally, scary Terry, hits a three to make it a two-point game with 45 seconds left. Butler gets a ball or gets a shot. He misses. Maxie's able to come up with it. And then that was it. Maxie's able to hit two free throws to give the Sixers the 109, 105, excuse me, 109, 105 victory and Maxie 37 points in his return. There were no signs of uh, rust is a little bit of a, might be too heavy a term for this after two games off, right? No signs of the injury, no signs of tightness. Looked great. 37 points. One rebound shy one rebound shy of a triple double they asked his teammate kyle lowry about it after the game here he is on nbc sports philadelphia What's triple double? Did he get triple double? one rebound shy oh he's a stupid guy how to how to chase down a rebound <laughs> you gotta chase, chase down a rebound baby he's a stupid guy uh that wasn't all from post game by the way Maxie's doing the post game hit on NBC Sports Philadelphia. And I love when the other players interrupt. <laughs> I I just think I don't know, it's fun. And Joel Embiid comes up to him and says, I wasn't even that, or I was better tonight. Imagine what we could do. Imagine what we could do. And I had the same thought because one thing that has been tough with the Sixers is like this changing of who's number two to Joel Embiid. Whether it's James Harden to go back in time, Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, there's been defined roles, but they haven't been well defined. I, I, I sometimes I, when I find myself being the most optimistic I could be about how this 76ers season could end, I'm like, okay, well maybe this is the year that they actually make that push for the Eastern Conference Finals and the NBA Finals. Maybe this is the year that they actually do it because there's it's Joel Embiid's team. It's not Joel Embiid's team shared with James Harden or Jimmy Butler, you know, other established veterans that are coming in here that demand that kind of respect, you know. This is Joel Embiid's team. Tyrese Maxey is the number 2 guy, clearly defined at, on his best day like yesterday, the 1A maybe. Now, the other thing is that Maxi shot really well. Seven, uh, 37 points on 25, 24 shots, I think it was. Jamal Embiid was 11 for 25 for 29 points in his 33 minutes of play. 
Um, and rebounds weren't there last night and assists weren't there. The Sixers got killed on the boards. That was another thing that was driving me crazy. The second, second chance points with the Miami Heat were just off the charts. But maybe this is the year with the find roles that guys, that, that this team could actually do something special. It's also a year we're not expecting them to do something special. Every other year they have a, a great expectations and they don't do anything. So maybe that just is you know, juxtaposition. I don't know. But the thing that I was thinking about last night, it wasn't just Embiid and then Maxi. It was Embiid, Maxi, and Ubre. Because one of the things the Sixers have certainly missed down the stretch is that late game spark. And Kelly Ubre is, I think, the definition of that, especially when you're talking about a fourth quarter. He could go through a game and be quiet with 10 points and all of a sudden he explodes and he's got he got he has maybe eight more points the rest of the way, but they're eight huge points. They're points that help put the game out of reach. Or they're they're points that make the other team the other team still chase you. Whether it's a exclamation point slam dunk at the end of the third quarter, or it's the the, the steal and the lay in on Jimmy Butler in the fourth quarter, or it's that three pointer in the fourth quarter against the heat last night, just five points, but they're two, they're five huge points for the Sixers at that point, especially when you're trailing in the game. You can't seem to get over the hump, especially in that fourth quarter. And then all of a sudden Kelly Oubre provides that spark. He provides the yes, we can moment. And that's what he was able to do with that steal and land on the heat. Sixers really haven't had that. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey has provided it at times, but it's been more spread out. I'm talking specifically clutch plays in that fourth quarter. And don't get me wrong, Maxey had his share of clutch plays in the fourth quarter last night as well. But I'm talking about this version of the 76ers going into the postseason, what they could bring. And in my most optimistic time, like, you know what? They got no expectations. Maybe this is the year we should expect the most. They got the play-in tournament here. They have an opportunity, when you look at the standings, to get in that sixth seed. But if they don't, this might be a, a good draw for them if they get the Bucks. I don't, I don't, ter- I'm not terrified of the Milwaukee Bucks. And yes, part of it is because it's Doc Rivers, but it's also because the Bucks just lost to the Memphis Grizzlies, crying out loud. The Bucks are a very beatable team. I'd love to see the Sixers do that. But looking at the Eastern Conference standings right now, you have the Celtics that are continuing to be on just another planet, but the Bucks have lost two straight. The Cavaliers don't scare me. The Magic don't. Nobody else. The only team that scares me is the, is the Celtics. The Bulls have clinched play in tournament. The Hawks have clinched play in tournament. Um, the Sixers right now are a half game behind the Heat for the seventh seed in the East. And they're a game behind the Indiana Pacers as the season winds down. Get up to that six seed, anything can happen. Anything can happen, you get up to that six seed. Uh, it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible. As you look at the rest of the schedule for the Sixers, I know we went over this yesterday, but just to give this to you one more time. So you get the win over the Heat. You got the Grizzlies. You're in Memphis on Saturday. You're in San Antonio against the Spurs on Sunday. And then you're home against the Pistons, the Magic, and the Nets to wind down the season. So you got... Five games left on the year, and you're trying to make up a game on the Pacers. Uh, as for the Pacers, as their season winds down as well, uh, their schedule is worth looking at. They're 43 and 34 on the season. And to finish up the year, they got the Thunder uh, tonight, and then the Heat, Raptors, Cavaliers, Hawks. So at least the, uh, the Heat and the Cavs should maybe give them uh, a little bit of a run for their money as things wind down, wind down here uh, for the season. My most optimistic times, I'm thinking the Eagles, or the Eagles, the Sixers can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but the thing that clouds that is that every year it's something. Every single year, it's something. Something happens in the playoffs. You hope that that's something get out of the way. It, 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 the injuries don't work like that. Things like that. Trusting Joel Embiid's body is a difficult thing to do. But anybody can get injured at any given time. Uh, As of right now, this is playing out beautifully. 
Sixers not playing, uh, obviously, in back-to-backs. Joel Embiid has time to recover. He's not going to be back at it till Saturday. So there's the off day today. Beautiful, wonderful, great, grand. This is shaping up to him being in shape, playing himself into shape by the time the playoffs start or the time the play-in tournaments or postseason starts. We'll call it that. So I'm very excited to see what the uh, Sixers have left this season. Seating's going to be tricky. Seating's going to be tricky. Your Philadelphia Phillies are back in action tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look forward to that. They're in Washington. 6 uh, 45 start time, I believe it is, in Washington. Aaron Nola's on the hill for the Phillies. It's a quick hook for Aaron Nola in the city of brotherly love. Aaron Nola has no room for back-to-back seasons with an ERA of 430. There's no room for that. You sign a seven-year deal, you better produce. Uh, spots got to be hit. Two-seam fastball's got to have the tail on it. And yeah, sure, give him some run support as well. But uh, I, it's like at this point in the season, the wins and losses obviously still matter. But I, knowing that Aaron Nola is actually going to be Aaron Nola of two years ago, that makes that's going to make me feel a lot better about the rest of the season. So even if tonight you get a start that we've talked about so many times with Zach Wheeler, where he pitched great, but he got no run support. Like for instance, Zach Wheeler having an ERA right now of. Um, 0.75 that's really good having one loss not good no wins also not good in two starts but as we know those wins and losses can go out the window and it's all about how a guy pitches in particular i'd like to at the, at the worst case scenario tonight i would at least like five innings at least from aaron nola one run five innings one run i'd love six scoreless tonight from aaron nola with like nine strikeouts i'd like that too but just in terms of his individual performance Let's need bare minimum run support tonight for Aaron Nola from this lineup. And just a great pitching performance from Aaron Nola. That's all I need. Is that too much to ask? A guy that's just signed a seven-year contract uh, with the, 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 the Phillies? Is that too much to ask that he does well? Is that crazy? Feels like it's crazy right now. And I know he's only had one start this year. That's why I'm like, all right, just turn it around immediately. Now's the time to do it. Uh, sticking in the NL East, by the way. I didn't know this was a record. I knew the Mets were struggling. But the Mets went 13 innings. They had a doubleheader yesterday against the Tigers, okay? Nobody was in the ballpark. They had a doubleheader against the Tigers. And in game one and game two, they had combined to go 13 innings without a hit. 13 innings without a hit. That is a. Not so amazing Mets record. 13 innings. They finally broke it in the eighth inning yesterday. Uh, also, um, Pete Alonzo came up with the uh, game-winning home run for the Mets. So there you go. Uh, or or game-tying home run for the Mets, I believe it was, in the ninth inning. Um, but yeah, the Mets got their first win. So they're just one game behind the Phillies, essentially. Good times. Good times. Uh, let me tell you about the great people at the Game Time app, ladies and gentlemen. You want to go to the game? You want to go to the concert? want to go to the comedy show? You know, WrestleMania is Saturday at the Link in South Philly. For all you huge wrestling fans, Game Time app's got it all. Download the Game Time app. Use promo code FARZY. And if you want to go to the game, use Game Time app, and you get $20 off your first purchase on the Game Time app. So if you want to go to the game, the concert, comedy show, whatever the case may be, Game Time app's where it's at. Also, don't forget about the Game Time guarantee. That is, if you find tickets in the same section and row for less money on another ticketing site, another ticketing app, Game Time will get you back at 110% of the difference. How about that with the Game Time app? Download the Game Time app to your phone. Use promo code FARZY. Get $20 off your first purchase with the Game Time app. How about my bookie? MyBookie.ag. Want to bet on the world of sports? You can do it with MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. And right now, if you download the app to your phone and you use promo code Farzy, you get up to $1,000 redeemable cash bonus at MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. If betting on sports isn't your thing, you know what else you can bet on? The world of television. You can also bet on the world of politics. How much fun does that sound, huh? MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. How about PHL Sports Nation, Philadelphia Sports Nation, enhancing your Philadelphia sports fan experience across all social media and blogs? That's PHL Sports Nation. 
SkyMotorCars.com. And how about people at Sky Motor Cars? SkyMotorCars.com. Check out Brett's amazing inventory at SkyMotorCars.com. Uh, Vontae Maddox, Sky Motor Cars client. Gets to keep his automobile. Staying in Philadelphia. That's fun. Let's get to the chat check. Wow, chat check is popping today. You guys are all, all about it. Uh, here we go. James Alexander, good morning. The Sixers are finally getting their momentum back on track. Seems like it. Uh, you know what? Here's, here's what I'll say. Game, is, game against OKC is a game they absolutely lose without Joel Embiid. Uh, the game yesterday is a game they lose without Joel Embiid. So just getting him back is incredible. Like with Tyrese Maxey, I don't see them beating the Oklahoma City Thunder, and I don't see him be beating the Miami Heat with just the the Maxey, you know, the Maxey, just Maxey and Ubre as their one-two punch. I know Ubre has been hot uh, from beyond the arc, and I know he's been hot in general. Um, but in all actuality, I just they needed Joe back. And they got Joe back. And Joe has been pretty damn good. Last night, I'll shy away from dominant for Joel Embiid. I'm going to shy away from dominant because what was the final numbers on him again? I think I said it was 11, 11 to 26, 11 to 25. 11 to 25 for Joel Embiid. Three for six from beyond the arc, four for five from the foul line, 29 points. Maxi, on the other hand, 15 of 26 for 37 points. 11 assistances. And nine rebounds. And not too shabby. Oh, also, for the people that get all uh, bet, uh, hot and bothered by Joel Embiid's turnovers, one turnover last night. He had one turnover last night. So there you go. There you go. Ubre finished with 18 off the bench. Not a whole lot other than uh, campaign coming up with uh, two clutch threes for the 76ers. So there you go. There you go, hon. Uh, IBH, what's popping? Nice to see you. 76ers, WC13, what's going on? Sean Kilrain, what's going on? Twiz, what's popping? April, CZ, good morning to you too. <laughs> uh, Sean Kilrain, why in the world is Embiid the porcelain doll wearing Skechers over Under Armour sneakers? Please tell me why. I'll tell you why. Money? <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know, he signed a deal with Skechers. Although, and I don't want to, I don't want to snitch. I don't want to be a snitcher. You know what I mean? But Joel Embiid signs the contract with Skechers, comes back, wears Skechers, does the post game interview at the Wells Fargo Center, and what is behind him over his shoulder? Still Under Armour sneakers. A little late, a little late, JoJo. Cleaning out your locker from all the Under Armour gear. I don't know. But I like I thought sketches were just for the skater kids. Like, you know, in my day, you were rolling into my Catholic school on dress down day where you paid a quarter to charity to wear your own clothes. Yeah, that was a thing if you didn't go to Catholic school. Catholic school did I talk about Catholic school yesterday or was the day before? Whatever it was. Um, you paid a quarter. Don't dress down days tomorrow. Don't forget to bring your quarter. And you paid a quarter to wear your own clothes. <laughs> I remember there was a couple of kids that just wore their uniform. Like, I'm not paying money to wear my own clothes. I'm like, aren't you more comfortable in your own clothes? It's not the point. I'm like, all right, way to make a stand for nothing. Anyway, uh, I wore my own clothes. It was great. Uh, but anyway, um, kids would come in with the Skechers, the real baggy shorts, and skater cuts. Skater haircuts were really big back in the day. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, the Skechers were, the, were a thing for the Skechers and Vans were the big things for the skaters. Now Vans have become pretty popular no matter what. No matter no matter what walk of life you're in. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. And I'd rather be in the new balances. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what do we got here? 76ers end season on seven-game win streak. WC13, love it. Adam, what's going on? Adam's exploits. Good morning. Sean Gillespie, Sean Gillespie, what's going on? <laughs> Adam, uh, you got yeah, Jordan Malata, 22 a year, ain't bad. Hey, Sean Kilrain, not a bad birthday gift like no other for Eagles, Jordan Malata, and now the left side of the line is secure through 2028. He's more than uh, here's more on the new left, uh, the more of the new deal. The left tackle secured four days 
after his 27th birthday. There you go. How about that? I thought you were saying it was your birthday, Sean Kilroy. But yeah, that's not a bad birthday gift at all. Uh, Sean Gillespie, what's going on? I listened to Pro Football Focus draft show about offensive linemen, and they said, ask Stout who he wants, and he'll coach him up, whomever they get. Uh, my only problem is Andre Dillard. That's the last time they gave Stout a first round pick, or Stout their first round pick. And it wasn't great. He's not here. Yes, a lot of it goes on the player. Like Jordan Mailata, like for instance, I'll tell you this Jordan Mailata, Andre Dillard. First round pick, seventh round pick, never played football before. Okay. One guy signed. <laughs> A, a contract that made him one of the highest paid tackles in all of football. 22 per year. 48 million guaranteed. Okay? The other guy's not here anymore. The draft is a weird place. I I had a weird feeling with Andre Dillard. Two things with him. One, Trey Thomas I was working with at the time. From him, basically, Andre Dillard had no interest in anything Trey Thomas was trying to tell him. Weird. Uh, and the other thing is, I just remember trying to talk to him in the locker room one time, and me and a couple of reporters were standing at his locker, and he was like, Yeah, I got to go shower. And then he came back, and it was me, another reporter, and then another, a, a different reporter walked up. So now there's three of us. And it's like, Yeah, guys, hey, I just got to go to film study real quick. And we're like, okay. And then he came back again with another excuse. And I'm like, if you don't want to talk, just say, can't talk today, guys. But it was just like a weird thing where he, there had already been some noise about how he wasn't really grasping what they were doing at the professional level. And I don't know if he was shying away from the media because of that or he just felt uncomfortable. But it was, it was like just little things like that just kind of give you an insight into who the person is and whether or not they're ready for the position. And it was just something like that. It was just like, this is weird. It struck me as just odd. Like, like this is a room of professionals. Everyone, everybody understands if you can't talk. I got too much work I got to do, guys. I'm sorry. Like, not even I'm sorry. I don't need an apology. But it was just like, does he know we're all this? Like, there's just one different guy here. He's just given two guys three different excuses. It was just something that stuck out to me as really weird about Andre Dillard. He ended up not being a total train wreck of a player, but when you draft a first round, when you go, when you trade up in the first round to take an offensive lineman, you expect him to be here for a long time. Didn't happen. Uh, Dynasty two one five is McPherson still on the roster? Yes. Adams exploit Maddox can't stay healthy. I think he's averaged about seven games or so. It's not far off. WC, I'm not going to be shocked at all if the Eagles go off. I'm expecting them to go offensive line in the first round. I'm expecting them to go corner in the second round. So somebody was it Sills the other day? Sills brought up the idea of trading back. If the Eagles trade back in the first round and they're able to get another second round pick, and they don't get Edger and Cooper or Jeremiah Trotter Jr., I'm going to be pissed, baby. When will Devontae Smith's contract get done? I don't know. I was hoping soon. But it seems like they might be putting that off a bit. Daz, good morning. Love Maddox, but he hasn't played one full year. Shoot, not even half a year. What are the numbers? Let me look at the numbers for him real quick. Uh, I feel like he's gotten the double digits. I mean, come on, the guy ate Scrapple on this show. If you eat Scrapple on this show, you play at least 10 football games. You know what I'm saying? Of course, take for take forever. All right. Research department's not doing so great today. Why is this being weird? Stop being weird. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, McPherson is one of those guys that we do forget exists. 
on the roster. What the, what what usually football reference is the first thing that comes up. Sweet sassy molassy. All right. I won't fire my research department just yet. Come on. Right, here we go. Yeah, 16 games three seasons ago. <laughs> uh last year four games. Year to that, a year prior to that, 9, 16, 10, 12, 13. Wah, wah, not great. Not great. Not great. Not great. Wait, what? Coffee and bagels to all. Okay, I'll have one. Sylvain. Yeah, let's see if he gets through camp. A lot of negative. A lot of negativity. Yeah, it's ready to see Howie Rosen's big move. Yeah, yeah. By the way, have you seen the Saquon Barkley workout videos? That I don't know what that's called. Will you do like a reverse sit up? But he's got two dudes like holding his legs, and he leans forward, leans forward, leans forward, and then comes back. That's uh, that looks difficult. That looks very difficult. Sean be so hyped for the Eagles and the entire NFL Texans. Oh, they look dangerous on paper with digs now. Yeah, I, that was that was something. That didn't end well in Buffalo. Gabe Davis, is he still with the Bills? Twins, get both arguments about BG being on the roster, but he's a great voice in the room. I, I Yeah, I agree. Leadership was the main role for Nolan Smith at Georgia. I'd like being good at football to be the main role of Nolan Smith in the in the, in the pros. Um, Daz, I've seen that too. Verse goes down to uh, the high teens. Uh, I've even seen him at 19. Was it CBS that had him at 19? And then the Eagles go up and get him. I wouldn't mind the Eagles trading back in this draft. I know it's the worst possible thing. I remember being at the Eagles draft party one year. I think it was the year they took Kevin Cobb. And the, the Eagles had a draft party for the first round of the draft, and they traded out of the first round. I was like, what are we doing here? Oh, unless he trades for Josh Allen. That's funny. Uh, morning, Carlos Drew. What's popping? Down there in Knoxville. Jason A, love the Milata, love the Sixers. Yep, it's great. It's all wonderful. Ooh, they, they're they saying Sidney Brown is going to start the season? I'll be rooting for it, but I won't be betting on it. Ooh, Twiz, you had to say Marcus Smith, didn't you? All right, Howie got a bad track record in the 20s. Marcus Smith, Andre Dillard, Rieger, the fireman. Was Marcus Smith? Was Marcus Smith the 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 Chip Kelly year? I think Marcus Smith was the Chip Kelly year, where Chip Kelly had final say on everything. But had Marcus Smith in the first round, and then Jordan Matthews in the second round. Carlos Drew, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Everyone's good. Everyone's nice. Everyone's wonderful. Tired of redshirting rookies every year. Oh, hey, I love the confidence. Sixers are getting that sixth seed. Let's go, baby. Uh, I, I saw yesterday Adam Kaplan say that Rieger, or sorry, Keely Ringo. Ugh, Rieger. Uh, I see that Keely Ringo is going to be the third corner. So, my guess is. Unfortunately, excuse me, they're keeping uh, James Bradbury. No, just talking about James Bradbury made, made me yawn. Uh, I think Keeler Ringo is going to be our quarter uh, quarterback number two, and I'm ready for it. If he was in the draft, we would uh, we'd be wanting him. I, I I'm rooting for your scenario that for Keely Ringo to get that spot. <laughs> Did he go after Eagles fans? I saw the Rock um, addressed Philadelphia. 
uh, with WrestleMania convention or whatever the hell's going on at the convention center. I didn't saw, I didn't see that he went after Eagles fans, but that is pretty funny. Oh, he's, he's a wrestler. There you, there you go. By the way, proud moment. Not that I was a huge wrestling fan, but probably my favorite wrestler was Mick Foley. And the Wings had a WrestleMania, WWE. Their last home game of the regular season was last weekend. And they had a WWE-themed uh, night. So people dress up as their favorite wrestlers. So me, as the PA announcer, um, I announced the power plays. And when they when they go on the Primo Hoagie power play, they put me. They actually put my big dumb face up on the Jumbotron, right? And... Uh, <laughs> I, I was like, I was joking with Bacon Bill, who leads the um, the Wings chants, you know. And I was talking with him, and he was like, "You doing anything for Wrestling Week?" Because I'm gonna, he goes, "I'm gonna dress like the Ultimate Warrior." I'm like, "That's pretty dope." And I was like, "Yeah, maybe I'll do like uh, Mick Foley, Mankind, Mister Sacco." And he's like, "That was great. Oh, that's a great idea." And I really, I didn't think I was gonna do it, but he was so happy about it. I was like, "Well, now I can't disappoint ba Bacon Bill. I got to do it." So I found a sock. And uh, I found a sock, like on the street, you know, in Philly somewhere, and I just brought it in. Now, I um, I, uh, I don't wear the sweat socks too often these days, right? And uh, I bring it in, and a big white sock, and I just, so I go, uh, I go, uh, the, the wings are about to go on the power play, and I go, and the wings are going on. And I raise the sock to the camera. Primo power play. And went over phenomenal. Really my crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Even my boss said in my headset, that really went over well. And I'm like, oh, of course, because I know my people. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Sacco would have to be Mankind, Mick Foley. Dude, love. You know, have to be my favorite. But uh, yeah, the wrestlers, man. They, 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 they're going to talk that ish. Twiz, this is a big, I like it. Okay, if Dean, Ringo, and Nolan, and Brown can contribute, our defense would be in better shape but we still don't know where they are. I concur. Sean Gillespie, A, Duck Rivers, because he always ducks responsibility. Hilarious. Will never not be funny on this show. Uh, Sixers so have back-to-back games against Memphis and the Spurs. That's the back-to-back. -back. I knew there was one back-to-back -back on the schedule. Thank you. Sorry about that, A. Appreciate it. That's the Saturday and Sunday. I was just looking at the schedule for crime in Italy. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday, they got the back-to-back. -back. Uh, but after that, they don't. Uh, that's their last one. Now let me just look at it again. Yeah, that's their last one. Oof. Joel's problem will be the playoffs when the NBA turns in the NFL. IBH, great way to put that. Daz wants Nolan Smith to bulk up a little bit. Trevor Bauer, says Daz. Uh, what else do we have here? Texans. <laughs> uh, what are you saying here, Brett T, bro? Farzy in the NBC <laughs> with two socks. Taylor didn't seem like he cared a little bit. I, I mean, look, I, I don't want to damn the guy for just turning down interviews, but it was just weird how he came up with those different excuses. Uh, Jason A. <laughs> just... Scrapple on this show? Damn right. I was pushing buttons. I'm a big dummy idiot, folks. Slagger, 57. Just made a bagel and I'm finishing coffee. There you go. Enjoy. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I still... Just say no, it's all natural energy. I didn't even finish my espresso. Cold espresso is nasty as hell. It's really a double. That's the... That's the American in me. I have espresso, but I, I it's a heavy pour. Longo, I believe, is what the, the Italians call it. Uh, my buddy sold his two WrestleMania. Oh, made mad money. Where'd he go, Sean Kilrain's friend? Hamstring. Hamstring. Is that all it is? Hamstring exercises? Gabe Davis signed with Jacksonville. Thank you. Marcus Smith was chip. <laughs> Carlos, did I call you Drew? I'm sorry, Carlos Do. Me scusi. Little G Griffith, what's up? Uh, I'm a big fan of the Eagles 2024 season. Uh, New Eagles linebacker, draft Georgia and Alabama, Texas. These are the rules. These are the rules. Oh, man, I forgot it's Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Corey Allen, what's going on? 
Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, you guys are wonderful, as per usual. Uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, in the chat. You guys are awesome. Uh, I'll be back with you guys tonight. Don't miss me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't miss me um, as you guys, upon conclusion of this show, uh, you guys should check out Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. That's Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Check that out. If there's a big game in Philly, I'm talking about it on the new Locked On Philadelphia Sports postcast. Ladies and gentlemen, postcast. So check me out there. I'll be on for a half hour after the game, talking about it, breaking it down, all that fun stuff. It's a brand new Philadelphia sports-centric YouTube channel by the people of Locked On Sports. So check that out. Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. You guys can find me over there as well. After Sixers games, after Phillies games, we're having ourselves some good, good times. So make sure you guys check it out right there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You guys are great. As per usual, my name is Mark Farzad. This is the Farzee Show presented by MyBookie, mybookie.ag. See you guys tonight after uh, the Phillies take on the Washington Nationals. See you guys then. Bye.